at the Bob Martinez Center for some more Sunshine State Conference Volleyball. I'm Taylor Storthy, and you're watching Tampa Spartans TV, where tonight your number six ranked Tampa Spartans take on the number 16 ranked Barry Buccaneers. It's a grudge match 
with Sunshine State Conference title implications on the line. If Barry is able to take the victory, they will all but secure the 2022 Sunshine State Conference title. If the Spartans can win, both teams will still be in the fight and it'll come down to the final few games over the next week. Your Tampa Spartans enter with a record of 24 and three. They're 14 and three in conference play. They're coming off a three a win at Palm Beach, looking to start a new win streak after having a win streak of one with that previous victory. Barry is looking pretty hot as of late. They've won four in a row. Crucially, a previous matchup with the Spartans that we'll talk about later. But for now, they also had a huge 3-0 win at Eckerd in their most, or verse Eckerd in their most previous match. And we'll get a good start here by securing the first point. Both teams, some of the best in the nation, a top 25 matchup here for Friday night under the bright lights of the Bob Martinez Center. Here comes Barry on the serve. That's a great block at the line and Barry go up 2-0. We mentioned before the Spartans, they're sometimes a team that'll be slower to get into gear. Even though that works against the majority of their Sunshine State Conference opponents, Barry has been one of the best in the nation. And you can't fall behind early against them. And just a misplay, a little miscue on the attacking setup allows for Barry to snatch one right there. They're up by three. Off to a hot start. Their libero will be on the serve. I that's Luana Ballara. And once again, an error at the line. The ever deadly Cali Cores just can't get enough under it. And now it's a 4-0 Barry lead. Course had a great season with the Spartans so far. Leads the team with 286 kills. And there's Natalie Perez, and that one stays in play. It's the Spartans' first point, 4 1. Now, good to see Perez getting some action early. When she is on fire, she can be very hard to stop. Had some great games early this season. And a lot of the times, it's not just one person giving the Spartans some success. Sometimes it takes the entire team as Dufresne with a brilliant service ace. That time it hit the net but goes over and gets down for the point. I actually apologize. That's not Dufresne. That's Callie Kors. Great serve right there. And the Spartans now have got three straight. The engines are revving. What should be, I think, the most exciting match of the Sunshine State Conference season of one of the best Division II matches you'll see all season has already had a great start. 4-3, Barry still leads. And there's Rivera with a dig. And Coors makes it work. Masterful effort from Barry to keep it alive. This time gets down and a great kill from Barry. They extend to a 5-3 lead. And I think the big thing for Barry so far, incredibly lethal with their hit percentage and their attacks. They have a 600 hit percentage in their first five attacks. This serve goes out of play, it's 
One thing I'm not surprised to see on that previous play before the service error, Diana Akapova already with two kills tonight. She was the AVCA Player of the Week, meaning she wasn't just the best player in the nation, or sorry, best player in the conference, but one of the best in the nation. And she is going to be a person the Spartans will desperately try to stop as this game continues. 6-4, the lead for Barry early. Jalen Thomas on the kill. Even though Thomas a good start with that kill, what Thomas is more known for is her blocks with the one she had earlier. It's at 102 and a half or 103 on the season. Seven four lead for Barry. Early days in the first set. That one just goes out of play. It's an 8-4 lead for Barry. And Chris Kadnak will take an early timeout. This is earlier than we normally see it, but clearly he's not liking something. He's going to want to fix it. So early in the first set, but Barry, a great start. They'll lead 8-4 when we're back from the break. You're watching Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. College sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for all of us. And we're back at the Bob Martinez Center. Sunshine State Conference Volleyball. Two of the best in the nation going at it. Barry leading eight to four so far in the first set. And they'll have the serve to kick off this phase of play. And it's a violation on the Spartans. Nine four lead for the Buccaneers. This is looking awfully similar to their earlier meeting this year. Barry was able to take a hard-fought 3-2 victory against the Spartans, handing them their third loss of the season and giving them the outright conference lead. The Spartans are 14-3 in conference play. Barry, 15-2. Those are very slim margins that the Spartans want to change tonight. What a play there from Seput to keep it alive. And there's Natalie Perez. Great kill. And the Spartans will end a 4-0 run from Barry. If the Spartans lose tonight, it's not going to hurt their tournament chances. But it might make their job a little harder. Really tr turning the final few games into must-win categories to maintain one of the best seeds in their region. But Barry, they want to make the upset happen. They want Lightning to strike twice and wear better than the Lightning capital of the world. They've got a 10-5 start here in the first set. Last time Barry won the Sunshine State Conference title was in 2018. Ironically enough, they shared it with the Spartans. That was their last title of the Sunshine State Conference since 2021, when the Spartans were also able to take their fourth national title. If the Spartans win and then both teams win out, we would see a repeat of 2018. And I think Spartans fans wouldn't mind a repeat of 2018 because that was also when they won their third national title. But Barry would like to flip the script in that category and bring a national title home for themselves. Both teams at this stage are very much locked into the postseason. But both would also have a chance of hosting the region if they can convert with their final few games. The only other 
player in that category would be West Florida. They hosted the region last year as one of the best in the nation and are currently 13th in the nation in terms of AVCA seeding. Now it's 11-6, Barry off the service air. Both teams going back and forth, but a sizable lead for Barry U. And Tampa is going to look to take that number from five to zero and into the negatives. A great service ace there to make it 11-7. I think a big thing, the Spartans, they've had two service aces. Barry, they've had two service errors. And there's a huge block at the line, redirecting it out of play. And now the Spartans, 11-8. Make it three in a row. A 3-0 run. As the Spartans looking to get right back into it. Make it four. A great kill from Cali Coors. The referee's indicating that it just went off the tip for Barry. And now we get a timeout. 11 to nine, still pretty early in the first set, but already a thrilling start. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. We've got a great, great number of fans here at the Bob Martinez Center tonight. Barry and Tampa, a true top 25 showdown for women's volleyball. Barry keeping it alive after a skirmish at the net. That's a good dig there from Barry's libero, but an even better block from the Spartans. Mackenzie Dufresne, Alicia Kowalski, the duo combine to make it 11-10. From 11-5 to 11-10, the Spartans proving why they're the defending champs, but this time the serve just a little too far. Great discipline from Barry to let it go out. It's 12-10 now for the Buccaneers. And by the way, I forgot to mention it, Barry wearing the black with a red libero, Tampa wearing white with Rivera in black. Cali Coors, great kill there as it's directed the wrong way. Great effort from Julie Schmerantz. But maybe Schmerantz just not as good at defending, although for attacking, she's had a great start. Two kills and 1,000 hitting percentage. Here's the serve for the Spartans. And there's another error from Barry. This time they do recover it. And Perez. Not on the court, but I know she will absolutely love that kill from her teammate Alicia Kowalski, who has tied the game at 12. And we are back at level footing for the first time since the very start, but Tampa can't take their first lead. A rough service error. And it'll send the ball back the other way. The Buccaneers ready with a serve. And we encourage Spartan fans to come out this weekend and support not just our volleyball, but women's basketball, because we have so much sports lined up this weekend. I'll tell you a little bit later for what teams to keep an eye on. 
but the regular season will conclude here for your Tampa Spartans. And you don't want to miss a chance to watch Spartans volleyball at home. All tied up after another great kill. Spartans again on the serve. And that one goes out of play. The Spartans finally take their first lead. They lead 14-13. But at the rate we're going, we very well could get into tiebreaker points in this first set if it continues this back and forth nature that we have absolutely loved so far. And another magical service ace. Great serve there from Zoe Seput. And she's now pretty much had every stat on the board from an assist to a dig, and now the first service ace. Might be hard for her to get a block though. She'll take another assist as Kelly Coors gets another. And after one or two missed points and opportunities, Kelly Coors proving why she's looked on as one of the aces of this Tampa team. Her fourth kill of the day, 16-13, Spartan lead. And that time, keeping it simple, Barry. End the run for the Spartans, making it 16-14. That's a great kill down the middle. I believe that it was Christy Paul. I will say, Christy Paul made that look effortless, made that look easy. But I guarantee you, getting that just like that certainly was not. Great play from the Buccaneers. Spartans looking to respond. And they do. It's 17-14. And by the way, on the Christy Paul kill, there was another assist from Borchich. She has four assists tonight and has a whopping 903 on the season. Well, 907 if you count the ones she's just received. Big block at the line and it's 18-14. And Barry will use their second timeout. A thrilling start in Tampa, hitting sixth gear as they take the lead by four. You're watching women's volleyball in the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. And as we look at this replay, we'll be back right after this. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even... Spartans ready with the serve. Set number one has been anything but slow because both teams have got off to electric starts. Barry took an early lead. The Spartans fought right back and are looking to hold on to win the set. That's a great play from Barry to keep it alive. And that's an even better block. They're gonna say it's a violation actually in Tampa as they call the play early. 18-15. That was definitely landing for the kill no matter what. And here comes Barry on the serve. Good kill from Perez. It's 19-15. And for Barry, they don't have any more timeouts. 
They're going to have to play through any struggles. And Cadnack will only be using his in case of an emergency. The Spartans have a little ways to go before that happens. Rivera. Can't stop at that time. Very good kill from the Bucks. Nineteen sixteen. Barry back on the serve. And the block doesn't do the job. Barry within two. Nineteen seventeen now. Barry with a three thirty three hit percentage. A really good start for them. Tampa only at 2.33. And down the middle, that goes out. 20 to 17. A few more substitutions being made. Kowalski and No back in. And one player I'll be interested to see if she has a chance to show up is Brianna Benito. Benito is actually a transfer from Barry. And, uh, you know, it's always cool to see someone facing off against their old team, old friends, potentially old rivals, hoping to get revenge. And Tampa making it 21-17. The crowd here absolutely loving it. We've got some of the stands filled, and we would love to see even more as our regular season finale continues this weekend. Tomorrow the Spartans face St. Leo, and on Sunday they face Florida Tech. And next weekend, South Regionals, either home or away, will have to wait to find out where it'll be. And Barry, Almost misplay the initial kill, and yes, they do. 23-17, and the Spartans have a 4-0 run and are two points away from a first set victory. That's a big block, and it stays in. Set point. For Tampa. And Tampa at full speed. Flying down the straight. Looking to take the checkered flag here in sector one. And in set number one. They win 25-17. We've still got more than two to go. Barry will look to bounce back. But for now. We'll take a quick break here at the Bob Martinez Center, and you'll be watching more of this thrilling matchup after the break on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service. So is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student-athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student-athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student-athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after-school care programs, 
foster homes, or retirement villages. They make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. And we're back at the Bob Martinez Center. The second set, ready to get underway here. And this is the start of what is a pretty big weekend for Spartan Sports. Later this weekend, tomorrow, you can catch Tampa on the road facing Lander. But it's not for volleyball or for women's basketball. It's the first round of the NCAA Regional Tournament for men's soccer. West Georgia faces Tampa women's basketball here tomorrow at 2 p.m. At 7 p.m., St. Leo faces Tampa in volleyball. And at 1 p.m. on Sunday, Florida Tech faces the Spartans. And Fort Valley State will face the Spartans in women's basketball at 5.30. But of course, for now, Barry and Tampa, still the aggressive, hard-fought, and entertaining match that we, that you, have paid for. And by paid, of course, you're watching for free on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. 2-0 Spartan lead. Barry can't keep it alive. It's 3-0 Spartans. And as I said before, this is free content. But with the way these two teams have been playing and with how exciting the start has been, it is well worth every single non-existent penny. Good misdirection from Barry, but Tampa recovers. And the block won't work. Great effort at the line, but just not enough in Tampa. Off to a 4-0 lead in the second set. I mentioned earlier in the year, and by earlier, I mean just a few days ago, Tampa took a rough loss on the road at Barry, as Barry had one of their best wins and biggest upsets of the season. It was part of the reason they were able to jump up to 16th in the polls, personally, with a 24-3 record and 15-2 in conference play. I would have ranked Barry higher than 16th at this stage of the season. They've had a great year, and even if they can't confirm and win the conference title, they're certainly headed to the postseason. And Barry, they have been stuck in reverse. They're going to take a timeout. It's 6-0 Spartans lead here at the Bob Martinez Center. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, 
Can you do it? It's a will you. Of course, Barry currently leads the Sunshine State Conference. They aren't leading in the second set, but it's very early, and we saw Tampa come back from a similar deficit. Barry led 11-5, and Tampa would ultimately fight all the way back to win 25-17. If Barry loses here and wins out, and so do the Spartans, they will share the conference title like they did in 2018. And honestly, I don't think either fan base would be too disappointed at that obviously Barry would like to win it outright but bringing home their first title since 2018 I don't think it would certainly be a bad thing either Spartans now lead by seven and here's the serve and that is a high powered kill they finally get their first point stopping what had been a very long Spartan run that had extended into the previous set 7-1 Thinking about 7-1, do apologize if you're Brazilian watching this stream. The World Cup is shortly, and Brazil, of course, had a huge 7-1 defeat back in 2014. And what's great about the World Cup is that this year, it's going to be at a time slot that won't really get in the way with Spartan sports. Meaning you can watch some World Cup in the morning, and Spartans women's and men's basketball, and hopefully a lengthy tournament run for our volleyball and men's soccer teams in the evening. 7-2 as Barry finds another point. This time it's an attacking error from Alicia Kowalski. You even hear the crowd getting loud. You don't always hear that for Spartan sports. That's why you always urge fans to come out and support the Spartans. Gives the team that extra energy. Putting it to good use. That one does go out of play, but a great effort from Tatiana Lyons. Had a lot of power and barely missed the corner. And you could also see the referee there having to duck out of the way. <laughs> Callie Kors, a big kill right there. And you got to feel unlucky there as this one hit Akopova very abruptly in the head. The good news is she looks okay, but that one will definitely sting. Tampa back on the serve, 8-3 lead. That's a great block at the line, but what a play to keep it alive. And Tampa responds with another block. That is a team effort from Schrenger on an unbelievable dig to a great block to put Tampa up by six. 9-3, still early in the set, but Tampa back up to a six-point lead. That'll drop to five on an attacking error. Well, service error. 9-4. Tampa has pretty much run neutral in that category. They've had three service errors, but also three service aces. Set foot. And Perez, what a play to keep it up by Barry. That's a great block, but it's just going to go out. And Spartans point. And Tampa's been just slightly better defending at the line with five blocks so far. Only two for Barry, but they've also had a strong physical presence. Haven't made it easy for the Spartans in the trenches. And a smart misdirection from Schrenger to steal one. It's 11-4. And we are seeing a mirror of that first set where Barry had taken that early 11 point to five lead, and here the Spartans lead 
But hey, Barry would like to make Lightning strike twice and do what the Spartans did. And a point like that can generate some momentum. Great kill at the center by Christy Paul. Actually, was that Jalen Thomas? I think it actually was Jalen Thomas getting her second kill of the night. Yes, it was. And make that number three. Actually, yes, they will. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the referees point one direction then the other, but not sure what they were pointing the previous direction what they changed back to the Spartans for, but that was a very simple kill. Thomas with two kills in a row to make it 11-6. Schringer just goes out of play, and Barry has now got three in a row. It's 11-7. Barry's hit percentage early was incredible. It fell all the way down to 0-5-9, where it's currently at. Spartans still staying about average. They're at 292. Barry can clean it up and get rid of those errors. He'll be right back to fighting with the Spartans. And it looks like they've certainly done a bit better, but the Spartans will still get another point. It's 12-7. I think the key for the Spartans is not to get complacent. That's not really been an issue for the Spartan side, especially under the tutelage of Chris Cadnack, but you always have to be careful. An 11-4 lead is one where you sometimes feel like you can step back and kind of coast a little bit. Not against Barry, not against the team that's already beaten you this season. You have to stay full throttle, and Barry is slowly getting back into this game. 12-8. Here's the serve from Barry. Good block, but the Spartans can't keep it up. Great job to keep it alive by Barry, but a violation there. It's now 13-9, Spartans lead. The Spartans do a great job of directing what was a hard dig back over the net. A great effort, but the Spartans can't keep it alive. It's 13 to 10. By the way, a little disappointing news for the Spartans. Zoe Seppo is getting, I think, just checked out medically here. He just suffered neither scrapes or bruises or just some leg injuries. Hopefully she'll be able to return. And she is heading back over to the bench, which is a great sign. Great play from Barry to keep it alive, but Lightning doesn't strike twice. The Spartans make it 14-10. And they were putting actually a bandage on set put there, and that reminded me of uh, an injury I sustained not too long ago doing intramural softball. Making a rough slide into third. Scraped up my knee a little bit. Not fun. And especially not fun, I'd argue, on these hardwood floors. A great block at the line tonight. Christy Paul has been very threatening, doing a great job of commanding the middle. But the Spartans, this time, return to sender. They licked the stamp and sent it. 15-10, Spartan lead. This time, a misdirection. The Spartans, I think, were worried about Paul on the play but recover quickly. Yeah. 
And that is a great kill from Kowalski, her fourth of the night. Second timeout for Barry, 16-10, Spartans lead. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. And we're back at the Bob Martinez Center. 16 to 10, Spartan lead. They're on a 3-0 run and Barry have just used their final timeout of the second set. They're wanting to stop the bleeding. And let's see if they can right here. Great block from the Spartans. A good recovery from the Bucks. And an attacking error. Unlucky there for Claudia Rivera. At 16-11. And Barry will certainly like that start. Getting a quick point out of the break. Just to kind of emphasize again. We want to see everyone who is available. The next two days. For Spartans Volleyball and Women's Basketball. St. Leo and Florida Tech. Will round out our regular season. And then, of course, if we're hosting, we'd love to see everyone back at the Bob next week. It's 17-11, and I think Barry were hoping that it went off of Spartan, but it didn't. Spartans with a tall defensive lineup. Lyons, Kowalski, I believe Callie Kaur is up at the net. Good job, I know, to keep it alive. And Tampa gets a point. That oh, was a good misdirection play. Doing a feint with Paul down the middle. Heading all the way back to Akapova. But a great block leads to another Spartan point. They lead 18-11. Seven points to victory and a seven-point lead. Block at the line, 19-17, and the Spartan faithful are absolutely loving it. And that one goes long, but it went off a of Spartan. It's 19-12. It's always tough to tell from this angle plays like that on the far side of the court whether there were tips or not that's why it's great we have the line referees four of them stationed because they'll see but sometimes our cameras can't Barry on the serve and that time I think it was just a little too much under it for Cali Kors 19-13 I think the biggest difference between these teams, the errors. 15 attacking errors for Barry compared to just eight for the Spartans. Yeah. 
That's a great block. And Barry gets the point. Another violation in the trenches. And it's going to be Barry's serve. And always chaotic. Up close and personal. Great dig from Rivera. And a better block from Barry. It's 19-15. And Cadnack will use his first timeout of the set. So even though Tampa six points from victory, Barry showing a lot of fight here in the second set. We'll be back with more. It's Touchline State Conference Volleyball after this. There are college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? 19-15, second set here between the Tampa Spartans and Barry Bucks. Great kill from Callie Coors, and it's 20. And I will say, even though Tampa off to a better start, it has certainly not been a walk in the park. Barry have put up a fierce fight in both sets. And so far, Barry has still kept within range. As it's only about a five point gap between them, and Tampa still needs five to secure a second set victory. Make it a four point gap off that service error. Tampa's leading killer, the ever efficient, the ever deadly Cali Coors, haunting the Barry defense so far. Meanwhile, Julie Schmerantz has five kills tonight, leading Barry. Barry's also led by Deanna Akapova with four as well. Make it 10 for Cali. No. Yes, actually, it is 10 for Cali. As originally they were pointing to Barry, but did a quick, whoop, my bad. Tampa, 21 16. So, no, yes, no. Oh, he's hard to read. And Tampa with another. It's 22 16. That's a great block of the line. The Spartans can't stop it again. It's 22-17, good defense from Barry. That's their fourth block of the night. Reentering the game is gonna be Monica Lopez. Better in the back end of defending with four digs. That's currently uh, fourth on the team behind Akropova's six digs, Borchich's five, and team leading eight from Ballara. Sorry three for Ballara. Hard to read that three on the stat sheet. And Tampa get the point, a violation for Barry, 23-17. Claudia Rivera, beyond the serve here. We also see JJ Ramirez in play. She has a dig so far. And an error trying to block it. 
It's 23-19. The serve goes back to Barry. I think a big thing for Barry was they had a complete collapse at the end of the first set that carried early in the second set, causing them to go down by a lot. However, here, even as the set is potentially winding down in the Spartans' favor, Barry have not collapsed. They've kept it close and made it a back and forth affair. That'll likely give them energy to get going in the third set. And a 2 0 lead is never safe in sports. So you have to imagine Barry is going to be ready to fight back as Tampa reaches set point 24 to 18. And this one lands in play. It's 24-19. And the serve is going to head back to Barry. A good dig to keep it alive. Great block in the line, but Barry, keep it up. A great volley ends with the Spartans taking the second set. A good block, and it's 25-19 as we enter another break. The Spartans one set away from tying the conference lead. Barry, to hold on, will need something magical. Who will prevail? Let's find out after the break. Here at the Bob Martinez Center, you're watching Friday Night Volleyball, Tampa Spartans TV, and the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you.
And we are back at the Bob Martinez Center. Friday night volleyball continues. While Ash Ketchum's 25 year journey to find championship gold may have came to an end for these two teams, the Spartans and Bear University Buccaneers, it has only just begun. A successful end of the season could see both lift conference titles. But obviously the main prize for both, national glory. The next few weeks will be huge for both teams. And this match is another piece of that puzzle. As the third set begins, the Spartans will take a 1-0 lead. Their first set lead to begin from the first point. Well, since the second set, where they did go up to a 6-0 lead early on. That one just goes out, and we're back level at 1-1. Tampa, a strong start. They won 25-17 and 25-19. But Barry, plenty of time to get back into the game. For Barry, they're on the road at Florida Southern and then at Eckerd to finish their regular season. And what a play to keep it alive there by Barry's libero. Monica Lopez in the three with a great play, but it's not enough. Tampa now leads 2-1. That time it gets down, it's 2-2. Good kill from Barry. And Barry back on the serve. Great dig to keep the play alive. This time it's attacking error. Kinlan Thomas just a little too early. Thomas was looking for a fourth kill of the night. Already very good start for her. With a 600 hit percentage leading Barry as a team. That time the Bucks just a little too much power. It's 4 2. Tampa just not perfect, setting up that attack. It's now 4-3. Rivera got just a little bit of contact as she and one of her teammates were going for the ball. And that just kind of got everything out of sorts as the Spartans concede a point here. Barry back on the serve, 4-3. That time it gets down, it's 5-3, Spartans lead. And Spartans, they may call them the Revengers because they know how to get their revenge. 3-0 wins against opponents they've lost to this year twice. And so far, they've won eight sets in their revenge games. And I know they'd love to get number nine here, 6-3. Already mentioned it, but Tampa will face St. Leo and Florida Tech here at home to finish their regular season. And from the 17th to 19th of we'll playoff volleyball. Whether it's here, West Florida, or potentially in Barry. Or not in Barry, but at Barry's home court, depending on how the seeding goes. And a great play on the offensive end from the Spartans. They make it 7-3. And timeout for Barry. Early days in the third set with the Spartans off to another strong start. We'll be back with more of the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network looking one more time at that kill.
soccer, college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. sports. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. And we're back at the Bob Martinez Center for Spartans Volleyball, here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Emily No with the serve. That one goes out of play. It's an 8-3 Spartan lead on a 4-0 scoring run. The biggest flaw with Barry's game tonight has been the attacking errors. And I believe this is their 18th of the night, depending on how it's inputted in the stat books. It was the 18th on that previous play with only 19 kills. That's not a great ratio. Rivera, what a play to keep it alive. Unfortunately, despite the best efforts from Kowalski and No, they can't do the same. It's 8-4. Barry and the scoring run for the Spartans. But tonight, Claudia Rivera with five digs, bringing her total in the year up to 498. Her total as a Spartan, 1,850, and it's 8-5 Barry as they win another point. Great play to keep it up for the Spartans. But Barry can't do the same. 9-5. Spartans had a rough first set. We're trailing 11-5, but ever since then, the side woke up and started to get into momentum. And when this team is rolling, they're one of the hardest to stop. And even though Barry have defended well, Spartans still hold a lead here in the third set. That's a great block, but it just goes the other way. In fact, if Kadnak was eligible, he could have kept that play alive. Sadly, he's not. 9-6, Barry gets another point. And they're now back in the serve. That's a huge block at the line to deny Cali Coors. 9-7, Spartans still lead. But Barry on a few points in a row there. It's funny, is they're actually gonna... They're gonna get a little now closer in the blocking category with five or six on the night compared to the Spartans nine. And this time, down the middle, Mackenzie Dufresne. It's 10 to seven, Spartans lead. Emily Noah, great assist there. This time just goes out, 11-7.
And make it 12 on another service ace for the Spartans. Of course, you can always keep track of the live stats of our games. And currently, they do have one figure wrong. They actually gave a point to Barry, and they did fix it. 12-7. Reads there, and it reads here. But now, here's the eighth point for Barry off a strong kill. Spartans not able to recover that time. That's a great block. Even though Tampa had a great effort to try to stop it, Emily No is trying to make a soccer move and kick it up. But that time just too hard there. Barry, a great kill. 12 9. This time Tampa gets it back. It's 13 to nine. And the Spartans makes a few substitutions. Seput and Perez back in. By the way, Seput all good, I think, with their injuries. Just needed them checked out really quickly. Back in the second set. That time it's a violation on Barry. And an incredible attack there from Cali Coors with a lot of power behind it. Barry will use their final timeout of the set. And we'll be back with more Spartans Volleyball after this in the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light. Now here's the serve from the Spartans. We're back after Barry's final time out. Barry look to stay alive here but players like Cali Coors want the opposite huge kill to start off 15 to 9 Spartans looking for revenge for an earlier defeat it'll also put them for a shared lead in the Sunshine State Conference Barry 15 and 2 in conference play the Spartans 14 and 3 and there it is, Lions with a huge kill down the middle. Third of the night, it's 16 to nine. It's a 4-0 run now for Tampa. And we have had a great crowd tonight here for some Friday night volleyball. And we'd love to see you again on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. And of course, come by and watch women's basketball. We've got ourselves a home classic invitational here. That time it's a violation on Barry, 17-9. An eight point lead and eight points to a match victory. That's a great kill there from Barry. Showing some signs of life, making it 17-10. Big thing I think that has just hurt Barry. Just airs. Their best killer, of course, Julie Schmerantz. 
has a zero hit percentage with seven kills and seven errors tonight. And that's not necessarily sustainable if you want to win the full match. Tampa a lot better in that category. A Barry would like to get one set. Maybe they can crawl back here. At 17-11, they've scored two in a row. Previously, it was that kill by Christy Paul, and this time a wayward block. Monica Lopez back on the serve. Currently leads Barry and the game in total with 11 digs. Big block at the line, but it's going to count for Barry or the Spartans. Hard to tell, but no, it is going to be Barry. Always weird to see like one point and then the other direction. Three point run now for Barry. Good job to keep it alive. And a massive kill from Barry. 17 13, Tampa will use their first time out of the third set. A four point run has brought Barry within four for the Spartans. And we'll have a thrilling conclusion here. The third set right after this on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. In NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. 17, 13, Barry on the serve, and we have had a very exciting third set. And Barry has come back. Now we're on a 4 no 5 0 run as Tampa with an attacking error. Looking to keep alive here as Tampa is looking to finish this match early. Currently trailing by three, 17-14. Tampa just needs to get it together. Stay cool, Coleman collected! And make kills like that more often. It's 18-14 there off a great play from Natalie Perez. Just goes out of play. Good attempt by the service there, there from Callie Kors. Kors will take a quick breather, but what a night she has had. Five digs, five blocks, and 14 kills. One of the most complete games you can have in just three sets so far. She'll be back on in a minute, I assume. As Tampa can nearly get the point. Good dig from Barry. Tampa can't keep it alive, it's 18-16. And now Barry, back on the serve. Huge block at the line, the combined effort of Thomas and Akapova and Barry are within one. It's 18-17. And they are on a 7-1 to one scoring run. Yeah. 
and it is tied. Tampa will use their second timeout, and we will play to the end of the third set here. Barry have crawled all the way back from what looked to be a potential game-ending deficit, but they're still proving why they're one of the best. 18-18, how will this set finish? We'll find out after this on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. So as we're back here at the Bob Martinez Center, the fans singing Sweet Caroline, hoping for a sweet finish to the third set for the Spartans. A Barry, they would like to turn it around for themselves. Tampa takes the 19-18 lead. Barry are already able to fight all the way back up to an 18-18 scoreline. And now the Spartans have taken lead once again. Rivera on the serve. Rivera can't keep it up. Yes, they do. But this time they can't. But how in the world did the Spartans keep that previous play alive? Unbelievable effort. I'm pretty sure that was Schrenger who went all out to just keep it off the ground. 19-19, Barry back on the serve. And Perez, a great block, Tampa up to 20. The Tampa faithful here at the Bob Martinez Center. They're getting loud. And that's an energy we love to have, and I know it helps the Spartans out. Twenty one nineteen. The crowd loving it. Four points to go for the Spartans. And both teams, they've used both timeouts. They can only make those changes. We're playing to the finish of this third set. Emily No on the serve. And that is an attacking error from Barry. Actually, it'll probably be counted as a, as a great service ace with the Spartans, 22-19. And No is back on the serve again. And a great dig by No. But that's a great block from Barry. But the question is, did it go out? And there's a lot of pandemonium. In fact, we do not know who scored that point. Both sides looking to get the right call. 
It looked like a great block, but question was, did Barry overstep and did it remain in play? I think it remained in play, but the question is, did Barry get too close to the net? See where it goes. Tampa gets the point. It's 23-19. That was a great play from Barry, and you could see their coach is absolutely livid. And in a game like this, in a situation like this, I really do not blame him. 23-19. And he's going to get a yellow card. And all I'm going to say, to tell you the rarity of a card, I only thought they were used for college soccer. But that is a huge warning being given to their coach. And there's one of the Barry players. I think just getting a little extra clarification, just talking about it. And as my friend and colleague Bruce Worsniak will say, you can't argue with City Hall. So it's a list of the things you don't see every day as play will resume. A yellow card issued for Flagler's coach. Oh, why did I say Flagler? That's Barry. We've also now just made it 23-20. Wow. That is, um, that is a brain fart of the highest order from me. I apologize. But Barry will regain the serve here. But, uh, yeah, very interesting to see that. Good kill, though, from Barry as they're right back into it. Claudia Rivera, good job after nearly misreading the serve. And it's 23-21. Barry back in the serve. And this time it's going to be Jalen Thomas. Thomas with a 6-6-7 hitting percentage. Make it match point for the Spartans, 24-21. And as Schrenger readies, what could be the final point? Let's give it up for the Spartans faithful. Let's let the Bob do the talking. And in the fight for the Sunshine State Conference title, we are tied. The Spartans get win number 25 to advance to 25 and three on the year. 15 and three in conference play. For Barry, their win streak is snapped. They fall to 24 and four. And we are tied at the top of the Sunshine State Conference table in three straight sets. The Spartans, once again, on fire in a revenge game. The fight for the conference title will come down to the final two games. Tomorrow, Tampa faces St. Leo here on Tampa Spartans TV. Meanwhile, Barry continue their road trip against Florida Southern. And it is simple. Whoever does better in these final two games wins the conference, and if both teams win out, they will split the title like in 2018. That's a great victory for the Spartans as they go to 2-0. Oh. Well, two in a row. As we approach the finale of the regular season. My player of the game would certainly be Callie Kors. Five digs, five blocks, two service aces, and 14 kills. Diana Akapova also put up 10 kills. Eight digs and five blocks, a great night for her. But the efforts of the AVCA Player of the Week wasn't enough as the Spartans take another big victory. We'll be back tomorrow night. I'm Taylor Storthy. Thank you for watching on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. The Spartans will be back again. And make sure you also tune in for men's soccer and women's basketball throughout the day. It's a fun weekend ahead. And we thank you for choosing to spend it with us.